All right, so my recording space is now redecorated and back in action. So let's get back up to speed with a full season review of everything that happened in the 2031-32 season with FC Voodoo's. So despite last year's table-topping performance and Europa League quarter-final appearance, expectations remain surprisingly low. Mid-table in the Super League, be competitive in the Europa League. But I think we can do better than that. Especially as our squad now has a great balance of established veterans and up-and-coming youngsters. Such was my confidence in this team that as the start of the domestic season came around, I hadn't signed anyone. Amongst the several youngsters out on loan, there was one notable departure. Milan Mihalovic. He wanted to leave for a bigger club and ended up signing for... Grasshoppers? Still, a healthy profit as our 2.3 million fee paid out two years ago was more than tripled. Ready to take his place, we've got Stefan Hartmann, who had a breakthrough season last year. Tony Block is now hitting his prime. The versatile duo of Edu and Gabriel Ishuk are both naturals in the central defence position. And we've got another youngster, Pascal Bakker, to nurture into the first team. But on the eve of the new domestic season starting, there would be another departure. Andreas Corner. Unflappable, spirited, intelligent, wonder kid. The fantastic season last year in which he made the right back spot his own and earned a place in the top 10 of the next gen list. So somewhat inevitable that he would attract interest from the top clubs in the top leagues. We had of course talked him out of signing for Bayern Munich in January, but we couldn't keep him away from Barcelona. Much as I hate to see him go, we've got to think about the future of the national side here. If Corner can go to the Camp Nou, and secure himself a first team place. He could turn into a real superstar. Plus, we've got a decent lump sum, future fee, and the promise of a money spinning friendly with the Catalan Giants as well. So we'll see you at the next national team meetup, Andreas. We started our Super League campaign in style, running newly promoted Winterher ragged, with three goals in the first half, Hans Brahma on the score sheet and setting things up as Thomas Murrow scored a hat-trick in a game that would eventually finish 4-1. We also put four on the score sheet the following week at Arau, then three away to Basel, another four plus another hat-trick, this time from Bradley Fink at home to Lugano. And at this point, we found out who our Europa League league phase opponents would be. Tough games with Valencia and Leicester, but we should be able to make the top eight again. Our first match would be Rapid Vienna, a side we had easily had the upper hand on in our competitive clashes so far, and... Hmm, not the best of starts. At least we were still going strong in the league, maintaining a 100% winning start through to the end of September. Oh, and before I forget, there was one more move in the transfer market. Fabian Schreck, who goes out on loan to 1860 München in the German second tier. A good chance for him to get some game time at a decent level. Our win streak extended to 8-8 at home to Luzerne, but then ended after the October international break as we drew with St. Gallen. Two home games in the Europa League would get us back on track after that disappointing draw with Vienna. An own goal started things off, and then a Ballesteros header put us two up. Pascal Ulner made it three shortly afterwards. Thundering runs from Lara to create those goals on the left, and then a Bradley Fink effort, and that was all in the first half. Following that easy win over Braga, Leicester were tougher to break down, but Lara again provided the assist as Muro scored the game's only goal. The only downsides being injuries to Edu and, of course, Radic, pulled ankle ligaments, and a groin strain, respectively. We had a pair of away games in November, and won both against Levski Sofia and Slavia Prague, placing us fourth in the league phase with three games to go. In the league, our unbeaten run continued through to the end of November, meaning 11 wins and 2 draws from our opening 13 matches. Into December, we looked to be heading for a goalless draw with young boys until Hans Brahma went down in stoppage time, which meant extra minutes being added on top of extra minutes and a young boy stealing it on 90 plus 7. We would then finish the year with a bounce back win over Lugano, another late defeat to Zurich, and a that's more like it win over Sion putting us three points clear with five regular season games to go. Back in the Europa League, English winger Jordan Keeling made a name for himself in our game away to CSKA Sofia, scoring a hat-trick as we ran out 3-1 winners and took a big step closer to securing that direct round of 16 qualification. 
Perhaps our toughest game of the league phase next as we took on Valencia. But it was the old guard who led the way this time as Cristiano smashed in a brace. The Spaniards threatened a comeback in the second half, but Gabriel Ishuk restored our two goal lead late on, just as well as Valencia would score one more in injury time. But we held on for three points. We had already qualified when we took on Sarajevo, so I gave some youngsters a run out, and Axel Blinden showed that there is still more to come from our youth setup. As we finished second in the table, now you may have noticed the lack of goals from marauding runs by Lara down the left in those final two games. And that's because of the January transfer window. Yep, we lost another talented defender, and much like Mihalovic, his desired bigger club was championship, not quite playoff contenders, Middlesbrough. But never mind, Goop will help us out in this sticky situation. And we have also recalled Fabian Schlosser from Loan to provide backup. And we have other hotshot youngsters like Moritz Schaffer and Martin Rinner ready to step in at right back. So, still no need for incoming transfers. We burst back into action in the Super League with a big win over Grasshoppers. And another victory over Luzerne. But that would be it for wins in the regular season as we lost to St. Gallen and drew our final two fixtures. Still, we managed to top the table by six points, all of which are of course carried over into the championship group. In the Europa League, once the playoff round was complete, we were paired with Rangers. Off we went to Ibrox for the first leg and what a terrible start as Yanis Hadji scored inside the opening two minutes. We had a great chance to get back in it on the half hour mark as the ball worked its way through to Radic, fit again for now, but his effort was saved. We had another great chance in the second half as Radic worked some magic on the right flank but Uwe Wolf couldn't quite connect. On 65 minutes we came forward once more and again it was Wolf who just couldn't quite put enough on it to get that equaliser. And that was our first defeat in Europe this season. Uwe Wolf, by the way, is a great talent who just needs some more first team experience. He'll get there. We needed a quick start in the return leg and got it as Fink tapped in from this scramble. Fink tap-ins have been a great source of goals for us and so have pile drivers from Cristiano with one of those here putting us ahead. Into the second half and Fink was provider this time setting up David Ballesteros. And that was the final goal as we once again reach the quarterfinals where we will once again face Leicester. But first, a championship group update. After a slow start at home to Luzerne, we picked up seven points in our next three matches before a second 1-0 defeat this season to Young Boys. A draw with Luzerne and a comfortable win over Lausanne saw us top of the group with three games to play. And up next was second place Basel. The deadlock in a KG back and forth game was broken midway through the first half as we managed to win a penalty, which allowed Radic to give us the lead. Basel, meanwhile, needed to avoid defeat to keep their title hopes alive and equalised in the second half, meaning 1-1 would be the final score. In our next game against Young Boys, it looked like we were heading for another 1-0 defeat, but then we did something for the first time this season. Score against our rivals, thanks to David Ballesteros. So after two 1-1 draws, we made it three on the bounce as we were held by St. Gallen, which proved to be just enough to once again top the table, although Basel will officially be crowned champions. Still, ABYB, I suppose. So that's the league season done, now let's rewind a little bit to April and that Europa League quarterfinal with Leicester. Playing at home in the first leg, we stormed out of the blocks, Keeling opening the scoring inside 10 minutes and Block doubling the lead moments later. Leicester did pull one back right before half time. But in the second half, Dennis Kaigen restored our two goal lead. And even though Stephen Hartman would see red for a second bookable offence late on, we secured a massive win. In the away leg, Kaigen would be among the goals again as we won a penalty on the half hour. And he converted. Much like in the first leg, our Premier League opponents would get themselves on the score sheet just before half time. But Miodrag Radic would put us back in front early in the second half. Leicester would equalise again to make it 2-2 on the night. But 5-3 on aggregate was what mattered as we made it into the semi-finals for the first time. Where we would face a team we have a bit of history with. Olympique Lyonnais. But before we attempt to reach our first ever Europa League final, let's catch up on the Liechtensteiner Cup. 
Well, no surprises in the quarterfinals as we thrashed Trison 13-0, a double hat-trick from Fink and Thomas Muro coming on from the bench, a more muted 4-1 win over Eschen Moron in the semis, though we did rotate heavily as that was sandwiched between those two games with Leicester, all of which set up a second consecutive final against Verdus 2. A frantic back and forth to start things off as Fink scored on 10 minutes, then Lasse Schmidt equalised immediately for Verdus 2 on 11 minutes, and David Ballesteros restored the lead on 12 minutes, the 215 spectators in attendance going wild. Stefan Hartmann and David Ballesteros both added to our tally, giving us a comfortable half-time lead. Hans Brammer then got one for himself early in the second half. Just after the hour mark, Bradley Fink sprung back into action, scoring twice and completing his hat-trick. Dennis Kaigen provided the final goal of the night as we scored one more than last year, and lifted the famous trophy once again. Alright, so now it's Europa League semi-final time, and if you're checking the remaining runtime on this video and trying to second guess whether or not we make it to the final, nice try. But if we make it to the final, that will be such a monumental occasion that I'm going to save that for a whole separate episode. So no spoilers. Coming to the business end of the season, we would find ourselves in a fixture pileup. Having to play the two legs against Lyon and Super League fixtures with Young Boys and St. Gallen, all in a seven-day stretch. Which did not get off to a great start, as Armand Morer gave the French side the lead early in the first leg. We almost got level very quickly as Jordan Keeling tested the goalkeeper's reflexes. Leon would score a second on 30 minutes, but thankfully it was pulled back for offside. But after that, highlights were few and far between, and it was this effort from Achilles that was our best chance in the entirety of the second half, as we went down 1-0. Seven days and two draws in the league later, we travelled to Lyon, but it did not take as long to get going as Bradley Fink opened the scoring, and on 35 minutes he would score again after a fine cross from Brahma to put us 2-1 up on aggregate. Luis Suarez, however, would grab one for Lyon just before half-time. And that was how the scores would remain until this late, late highlight, which unfortunately for us would result in a last gasp strike from Kabonvik, devastatingly denied a place in the final right at the death. So despite that disappointment, and despite the loss of some key players with outgoing transfers, that was a pretty good season for FC Vaduz. And we are getting so close to that European trophy. But how close are the national side getting to qualifying for a major tournament? Find out in the next episode.